Next, I need to add the buttons that are going to represent the uh, numeric inputs for the calculator. So, if we have a look at the Windows one for a moment, you can see that we've got these three rows here, and then we've got an extra one here that's representing the zero. I'm just going to do these first three rows. I'll need a button, and I'm going to drag it on as best I can where I think it needs to be, which is there. Let's go and have a look at the XAML. A few things have happened. Now your code might look a little bit different to mine depending on how accurate you were at placing that button. The first one that's rather interesting is I've got grid.columnspan equals 2. What this is saying is the XAML assumed from where I dropped that button onto the surface that I wanted that button to actually go across two columns which in fact I don't. I want it to stay in this column here. So what I need to do is edit that XAML and just make sure it says grid.column and I want it to start in the first column which is 0. Next I can set the content so let's set that to represent button 7. I don't want to worry about the horizontal alignment so I'm going to get rid of that or do I care about the vertical alignment, so we'll get rid of that as well. And I'm not concerned about the width. The reason I'm not worried about the width and height is because I'm going to control those by using the margin. So if I have a margin of 0, for example, you'll see that effectively the button takes up the entire cell, if you want to think of it that way in a, uh, Excel terms when you have grids and rows. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually have a little bit of white space around the, bar, uh, the button. So if I set that to 5, that means I'll now have a 5 pixel border around each side of my button. That looks pretty good. So now I need to go ahead and populate the other buttons for my numeric input. Now I could go ahead and get another button, drag it into the next spot and set it appropriately. But it's probably a bit easier if I just go ahead and take the one I've already defined and tidy it up here and copy that, paste it two more times and change the content values so that'll be 8 and 9. We can't see these buttons at the moment because they're actually layered on top of each other like pancakes so what I'm going to do is actually change the column. So I'm going to say that uh, button that represents 8 is in column 1 and the button that represents 9 is in column 2. And now we can see we've got 7, 8 and 9. Now I've defined those. I'll copy those three. Paste them below. And this time I'm going to change these values as well. So if we look back at our calculator it should now be 4, 5 and 6 that we're doing. So let's do that now. 4, 5 and 6. Whoops, would help if I set them in the right one, wouldn't it? 4, 5, 6. And the column should be 0, 1, whoops, 1 and 2. If I could get my 1 to work, there we go. Um, but what is different though is the row. We don't want to be on the same row as this. We want to be on the next row down. So that should be row 2. So now we've got 4, 5 and 6 and you go ahead and repeat that to get the next row.